Thank you for the topic and thank you for interest in the points that I'd like to share with some basic fundamental factors about South Korean economy. Uh, as we speak, the South Korean economy is about the uh, 10th largest trading nation in the world, also 13th largest uh, nation in the world in terms of GDP. And when you want to measure nominal GDP for capital income, that is uh, above $25,000 per person. In terms of total power parity, that is very close to France and Japan level. So if you want to measure all these numbers, Korea is a best part. And also when you want to measure the income distribution, Gini coefficient, before tax and after tax, this is showing you the that is, before tax, Korea Gini coefficient is much better than all this in the US and Japan. Income distribution is more or less you know, acceptable. But after tax, uh, still the number is something better than the US and better than Japan, but not you know, the, uh, better than Sweden because in Sweden they pay a lot of tax. Okay? So that means uh, amount of tax paid by Korean taxpayers' money is not that high compared to other typical advanced economies. So what is happening in Korea right now is despite all this achievement, uh, because of you know, some politics about failing all these economic outcomes in terms of bipolar they try to create perception that there are two sides of people. One is the powerful, another side is the not quite powerful. For the powerful side, they uh, align multinationals, it can be domestic companies, the foreign companies like the Samsung, Cafes, and GEs, and uh, all these you know, multinationals. And they believe this you know, kind of powerful side is evil forces because uh, they create a picture that these are the ones who is going to create all this economic high and uh, squeezing the weak and less advantageous people to the end and they become immersed, they become uh, the biggest winners of technological advances and globalization. On the other hand, uh, they want to frame image the uh, Korean society. We have a large number of growing people who are poor, not quite affordable. And uh, the reason why they come into the institution is because they've been exploited by powerful countries. And in the last 10 years, Korean politics was failing this sort of bipolarization because in the past 10 years we've seen the power taken by left-leaning government and they spoke for more distribution and so that government come up with the idea of bipolarization society. But funny thing is, even though they stand for more income distribution and the policy they did was some, you know, the mix of New classical uh, market opening at the same time, new government regulation, income transfer. But income distribution is income distribution in Korea has been worse than the So when you consider track record of those left leading government, even though they stood for more distribution, but income distribution was getting even worse. And then uh, two years ago, a uh, country was going through presidential election. There was for the first time in Korean history, right-wing candidate. They never spoke about how they can uh, enhance growth potential. They never spoke about economic growth, but most of the time they spent about economic democratization, which meaning that more income redistribution from wealthy and from big business to small, medium size and less advantageous people. So because of that, uh, economic growth has been declining. And typically, Korean economy is like between 3 to 3.5 percent. From Western standard, that is not quite disappointing. But Korean standard of registering, you know, 8 to 10 percent economic growth after 30 years, this is so disappointing. And also, what is happening in Korea is uh, so many Korean big business they are moving away from the investment from inside Korea to outside Korea. So in the past six years, what is happening is uh, outside flow of Korean investment to China and 
East Asia is excelling, migrating streets to the West Texas. And you must be wondering why why that's happening. So because of all this, even though in terms of appearance, in terms of people living standard, the consumption capability, you know, so I think it's time for more thing, interactive discussion with the speakers. Is a grading, the demarcation between winners and losers, and so this Korean politics. If this continues, you know, perhaps you know, the future is going to be very much long. I will start here and work on it. North Korea. I don't know anything about this, <laughs> except, except, uh, well, uh, perhaps you know, North Korea and Cuba is one of two most closed economic systems in the world. And the only way they can survive on the long term, not the immediate term, is not you know, strengthen their uh, nuclear capacity, but very much address the opening of reform. But your Kim family now reaching into the third son. Uh, they understand uh, that may be good for those Korean people, but that may be good for those Korean regime. So because of that, they are much, you know, very much in trap between very much difficult choices. We'll see what happens. Has, has the bipolarization that you mentioned led to a lot of populist policies here? Or no? That's right, precisely. precisely. So because of that, uh, right wing and left wing, they both talk about bipolarism. They both promised no redistribution. But the question is, as you've seen in many Latin American countries and European countries, unless you have economic growth keep going, there's not much basis for redistribution. These days, you know, people they can easily move from one country to another country. As you've seen in the case of you know, the French government, along the government, they promised to increase uh, taxation to rich people to 70 percent. And by the then news, you see the, some famous you know, French movie star, John yeah. Paradis, and President Louis Vuitton, they changed the citizenship. So that is happening in global society. The important thing is, you need to have an increase of your gross potential. At the same time, you need to have some social safety. So in Korea, we have several things going on. Number one, the fastest aging society in the world. There are three stages of aging. One is uh, about 4% of people is uh, considered older person. Old person means uh, you are older than 65 years old. And 14% older person is aging, aging society. And 20% means one out of five become very much older person. A uh, country like uh, France, it is taking more than 165 years from aging to hyper aging, still yet to get there. For Japan, it took only 36 years from aging to hyper age society. Japan is like an interesting society. So big news for Japan is not only in terms of the huge swelling number of old people, but decreasing quota population. Suppose you have decreasing quota population in countries like Japan, where the manufacturing dynamics are so important that there is losing dynamics. Similar thing happening in Korea. Even, even fast speed, Korea is expected to take only 20 years from entry to aging to the high food. The fastest in the world. We Koreans you know, drive pride in doing something fast, fast, quick, 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 pali pali. Again, you know, in this very un, 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 honorable you know, dimension country, the set world record, 26 years. That means, as I mentioned earlier in the morning, uh, Korean people have longevity, the second highest in the world, mid 80 years. But they are waiting for long life after time. But you don't have much in there. Then uh, there is a you know, very, very worrisome situation in Korea. And now you enter the Korean politics, it is going to even get the uh, situation even worse. The key is uh, we need to create such a critical mass of people who can talk about increasing gross potential and make it happen. Otherwise, this is blue. What about immigration? Immigration, yeah, good question. Because uh, Korea is uh, one of the closest nations in the world in terms of immigration, along with Japan. There's some cultural historical reason because these two countries, they believe they are you know, pure blood country in the African society. So they've been doing it for more than century after century. So because of that, they are not willing to open doors and to break extent. 
Uh, I think you know the country uh, need to engage in huge debate whether or not they go to total reform in immigration policy. I do not see that will uh, come in in any in a few years. But it's the uh, I don't know if you have talked about North Korea. I'm just wondering if there's like a real. Just a reminder: there's only one minute for left for this round. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well. Uh, the only way I see reunification in Korea is not go through the world, uh, is you know the collapse of North Korea. And in case that happens, the people are quite wondering why left North Korea, and the country is going to be left, you know, the country without any political regime, so country in vacuum. Another possibility that is going to be uh, reunified under South Korean terms and conditions. But even that happens uh, when you consider experience of. West Germany and East Germany, they will translate tremendous amount of billions, billion dollars, and perhaps you know that is not good, good news for Korean economy for next 10 years. But eventually, it, it will be good news. So the discussion in Korea right now we are having is we need to get by increasing our growth potential. With this one last round, we will come to the end of our Asia country. So we have...